All right, looks like our players are just about set to get ready here. Thanks so much for coming along. It's day number one here for Mythic Championship 5. We're super happy to have you along. And we've got, well, <laughs> one of those openers. Two big payoffs and an Oko. No ramp to speak of, though. Yeah, and it wasn't, if you can tell just how fast Huey chose to mulligan there, it wasn't even a close decision for him. It's absolutely important to have one of your mana ramp creatures early to basically be able to, you know, accelerate into your powerful Planeswalkers. And just as quickly, he keeps this hand. This is a six card opener. Looks really good, though. There's Disdainful Stroke. Yes, that is in the main deck. The players had decided to register this deck. There, there's multiples that kind of worked together and came up with the list. Are playing Disdainful Stroke in the main deck. That's a nod, of course, to the Golos decks that we've seen a fair bit of. Here's Ramp into Ramp, though, for Martin Yuza. Oh, yeah, and this is going to be huge. Martin now has the ability to play turn three Nissa, who shakes the world. However, Huey has that Disdainful Stroke in hand. So curious to see if Martin will actually choose to play around the Disdainful Stroke. He does know that Huey has that in his hand. So he can actually choose to play it slower, run at Oko and Paradise Druid instead. Oh, really interesting stuff because the way that Huey's lands played out was Forest for the Goose and then a tapped Temple of Mystery. He could or couldn't have it. Martin really doesn't have a way to know. Yeah. And you know what? I like this. This th 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 this is great because the only thing Huey can have here is the Stainful Stroke that could interact with Martin. So it's better to just continue. He's still putting pressure onto the battlefield. He's got that Oko in play. He's got a Paradise Druid that he's going to play. And this puts Huey to the test. If Huey just continues to pass with mana up, he's not going to win this game. Exactly. And by the way, we are calling William Huey. That's his nickname. If you're new to Magic, well... Everybody calls him Huey. So. Yeah, as you can see on the account name as well on the bottom, MPL Huey. There so. you go. Yeah, there you go. So there's your reminder. It is funny, though. You can kind of tell when people met him. Uh, you know, people that knew him when he was younger will call him Billy. Right. Uh, or even Bill sometimes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, now, now Huey's in a whole world of hurt here. Uh, didn't get draw land number four. Couldn't get anything going. Actually choosing to still keep up that disdainful stroke instead of running out in Oko. And, uh, you know, Martin still going to be very mindful of that disdainful stroke. Keep in mind, this isn't just one or two strokes. This is the full four copies that Huey's playing in his deck. Yeah, the good news for Yuza is that he can just continue to apply pressure to the life total of Huey. Now attacking in for a full seven damage here on turn four in his blue-green deck. I mean... This thing is sweet, and it looks like Martin, once again, is going to be content to just pass the turn back. He does not want to run into Disdainful Stroke. He knows once Jensen does something like this, cast a Wicked Wolf, the shields will be down, and he can deploy one of his big threats. Yeah, and uh, Huey does know about this. So, he, you know, Martin has been clearly playing around the Disdainful Stroke here at this point. And, you know, again, Huey cannot win from this position of just continuing to pass. So he needs to be proactive. He needs to start putting threats onto the battlefield. But now the window is open. Uh, Martin can now slam whichever large threat that he has in his hand. Let's see, he's got access to six mana, it looks like. So we can still just slam a Nissa this turn. And it's going to be really difficult. The blue-green deck just doesn't have a whole lot of ways to deal with Planeswalkers. Yeah, there's a whole lot riding on that Wicked Wolf for Jensen right now. And uh, it looks like it may just get overwhelmed this game. No, it does have a food token to eat defensively here. It might make an attack this turn for Yuza not super great. But next turn, we could see the Agent of Treachery come down or just more food plus uh, lands get animated, and, and it's just going to overwhelm the board. Jensen in real trouble here. Yeah. And Martin choosing to untap the forest here. I guess all of the lands in play are forest, but that's, that's nice because that does give him additional mana to be able to activate the Gilded Goose or sack that food for three life, but he's in such a commanding positions, right. position, you're not going to be seeing that happen here. So he still has Oko to use, right, this turn? Yeah. And he can make that into a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, he's actually going to steal Gilded Goose, trade you a food. Now, the Wicked Wolf gets a little better there, but not significantly. And look at this from Yuza, now attacking the mana of Jensen, who is stumbling. And you can see the look on Jensen's face. He's like, oh, this isn't good. Yeah, I really like this really heads up play here. Martin just kind of thinking, what are some of the ways I can lose this game? 
Huey has already missed several land drops, so it's pretty clear that he needs a land. So he's just going to try to strip all the resources that he can and just continue building on this lead. He's got that active Oko. He's got Nissa. He's generating a 3-3 every turn and a 3-3 every other turn with that Oko in play. And, of course, the backup plan of Agent of Treachery in hand. Oko, Thief of Crowns, or a Wicked Wolf at the ready here, as well as Questing Beast for Jensen. So he does have options this turn thanks to that breeding pool. Yeah. It's going to be Questing Beast. Right now, he has a pretty clean attack as well. The only blocker is that food for the Questing Beast, and that would be a chump block. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be. There's a chance that we might actually see a double chump block here. We could see Gilded Goose Goo go in front of a Wicked Wolf and the 3 3 going in front of the Wic the Questing Beast here. So just so that Martin can keep both of the Planeswalkers in play because they do generate continuous. They're, they're both a continuous source of card advantage over the course of this game. Is Martin willing to throw or sacrifice that Oko and choose not to block here? He's got Jensen down to 11 life, and uh, Huey's tapped out as well. So the food tokens will not be gaining him life anytime soon. So could be looking at, well, how much damage can this I get This might in? be close to lethal because right. Martin can just run out Agent of Treachery and steal the Questing Beast. Questing Beast has haste and vigilance, so this might actually just be a lethal attack here. Let's see. We got four... Three from the forest, three from an additional forest. I mean, that's 12. Yeah, that should be enough. Seven, you turn the food into a 3-3, three, three, and you untap the so land. Yeah. Yep. Four, seven, eight, Thirteen. nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's plenty. Plenty enough to get the job done here for Martin Yuza. Agent of Treachery, of course, a huge game swinging effect. Almost every time it hits the battlefield, you really do get your seven mana worth from it. But in a situation like this where one player was able to deploy effectively their whole hand and look at Jensen's hand, that tells the whole story. He has four spells just locked up in his hand because of his mana issues. And game number one goes to Martin Yuza. Yeah, you just really can't afford to stumble in this matchup. And Huey, you know, he did mulligan. He had an okay start there, but, but Martin with that explosive start there with multiple mana creatures and just, again, heads up play, right? Playing around that Disdainful Stroke. Because if he just tries to slam that Nissa on turn three, if Huey goes Disdainful Stroke and then untaps and follows that up with another play, we could have seen a much closer game. Yeah, it's, it, it ends up being kind of the thing where you look at that and you go, this is the way I could lose this game, is by letting my opponent actually use their mana in a meaningful way. Where if I simply opt out of that and just say, no, you're not going to be able to use your mana meaningfully this turn, at least you know, on my turn, then he just used that one turn window to just explode onto the board, and he's never looked back. So sideboarding here for Jensen. Looks like he's taken out all four of the Disdainful Strokes and brought in three Ether Gust. He still has to take out one more card, though. Oh. Maybe just two Ether Gust. And one of Veil of Summer as well. Very interesting there. Nice way to fight counter spells, but also if somebody is looking to steal one of your permanents with Agent of Treachery, you can also counter that and draw a card. Questing Beast also came out, it looked like. Yeah, not as effective, especially when you're playing against a deck with Wicked Wolves. Also, Oko has the ability to shut down the Questing Beast. And every now and then, you can also just run out Big Hydra Crisis to block as well. So this is not really the matchup for the Questing Beast. I think it really, really shines in the Golos matchup, where there's a bunch of zombies that it can attack through. But here, there's plenty of large creatures that can just kind of get in the way of that Questing Beast. All right, game number two incoming. Jensen did mulligan to six that first game, but he's got a keeper this time. And this hand looks great. Turn two, Oko, what more could you possibly ask for in life? And there could be a turn two, Oko, for Yuza as well, if he can use once upon a time to find a goose. Yeah, he could find a goose, potentially even an arboreal grazer, if he kept any, any of those in after sideboard. Really impressed with kind of the performance of this Bant ramp deck. This is not really something that was heavily submitted. Most people, if they did choose to go Bant, they chose to go with the Bant food option. And otherwise, they chose to go with Bant Golos. And, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of the, the, the Czech team of superstars that are all roommates as well uh, happened to have, you know, stumbled, uh, or not stumbled, but tested and produced this deck that has a very impressive win rate in this tournament. Well, there it is. Turn to Oko, Thief of Crowns here for William Huey Jensen. That's right where you want to be, and you can see why.
Now he gets to untap here on turn three with Oko in play, a food at the ready that the Gilded Goose can use, or he can turn into a 3-3 three, three and start attacking. Yeah, I think you want the mana from the Gilded Goose, so I think he's probably going to make the food into a 3-3 three, three attack and then make another food with that Gilded Goose that's in play. And you see a little Bluffski here mm. from William Huey Jensen decides to pay two life for the breeding pool, even though taking a quick glance at his hand, well, he doesn't have anything blue to cast at instant speed. And I mean, I know what he's doing here, right? N not only is a bluff a decent thing to do normally, Martin Yuza is known on the Pro Tour for respecting these type of bluffs. He is the type of player that you really do want to say, hey, I have a thing, play around it, because he will. Yeah, absolutely. However, there's an Oko in play on Huey's side of the table. It's one of those things where, in this situation, Martin is the one who's behind. So he does have to play something. Yeah, and, and he, of course he will. Right. Yeah. It, I, I didn't mean it to say that Martin will just blindly. You know, I, I, I realized after I said that, I'm like, well, he will when, it, when he needs to. Exactly. But he is more likely to. You know, some people just jam. Some right. people are like, they never have it. Just run it out there. That is not Martin's style. Martin will play around cards when he feels like he can afford to. Unfortunately for Huey, <laughs> uh, Martin was not in the position where he was really able to here, so it just cost him the two life. Now Huey actually has to has the option to run the old switcheroo here with the minus if he wants, but it looks like he wants to just continue putting on pressure here instead. Mm -hmm. No food on the other side, so the Wicked Wolf would just be a trade for one of these attacking food to tokens. And curious to see if Huey's going to choose to just run out a 4-5 or five Voracious Hydra this turn just to make sure that he uses his mana efficiently and also have something in play to protect the Oko or just pass. Oh, it looks like he's just going to choose to eat that Paradise Druid instead. Yeah, anytime you can get these two forms, oh, yeah. they just go for oh, it, yeah. you know? And again, we see a pretty consistent theme here where it ends up being the mana that gets attacked. You know, the, a goose dies, one of these Paradise Druids dies, they steal a land. It, it, it happens actually quite often where they're really trying to hold each other down. And of course, I mean, Martin's deck has the name Ramp in it. <laughs> Anytime you can kill their, their mana sources, you're probably pretty happy. Yeah. And these Hydras play very, very well with Oko. If an Oko does target one of these Hydras with plus one, plus one counters, they just become gigantic. This Voracious Hydra would be a 5-5, five, five, as it would be a 3-3 three, three with two plus one, plus one counters. Untapped Hollowed Fountain. Grazer into Oko. Is he going to make a 3-3 three, three here? He could also just to, to choose to tick up, make a food, as the Arboreal Grazer can just block the Voracious Hydra. Mm -hmm. And just start getting food onto the battlefield. If he does so, he will get an additional loyalty on Oko, which could matter here as well. Right. However, if he does that, next turn, Huey is going to be slamming that Nissa who shakes the world onto the battlefield. And Huey will at least be able to get five power in play. So Huey will be able to remove that Oko in play, as all he needs to do is play Nissa, animate a land, attack. And Martin can block one of the biggest creatures, which is a 3-3, but that still means five damage is going through. And this is kind of a case study, by the way, in what a turn two Oko looks like. Because if you look, Jensen, you know, he's down to Nissa who shakes the world and just a Paradise Druid. But Oko has really dominated this board from the get-go. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to, to ride it to victory here. Yeah. And Martin probably going to be looking to trade the Arboreal Grazer here. Oh, wait, no, no, never mind. He's going to make a big Voracious Hydra. It will lose Trample. Oh, okay, and he's just going face. Yep. Getting in there. This is a lethal attack, so Martin is forced to block here regardless. Indeed. And it's going to be a trade-off for the breeding pool. And that is going to put Martin down to two here. And when you're sitting there with Nissa, who shakes the world, and your opponent has no threats whatsoever, that's just a steady stream of lethal threats now that Jensen will have access to. And that is going to be game number two going to William Huey Jensen. So we're going to get a game three decider here between these two awesome players. You gotta love that. Yeah, and I mean, it just seems like, go, you know, those quick starts are absolutely 
crucial yes. in this matchup. I mean, going first is huge because that allows you to run out those planeswalkers with some safety, with some protection, with those creatures. And uh, you know, Huey going first that game and, and getting that quick start this time around, um, you know, was really able to punish Martin Yuza. Should mention also, you know, uh, we, we said it coming into the round, but these players are both at four and one on their record, which means that a win in this match, in other words, this next game, will guarantee them that step forward. Now, I say it that way because they get to go to game uh, to day number two here in the tournament. But the reason I say a step forward is because, you know, for a lot of players, that would be an accomplishment in and of itself. But for Hall of Famers and players of this caliber, both, both Martin and Huey, you know, they're, they're thinking about Sunday, right? They're thinking about trying to make that big top eight, get to the big money finish, the big points, uh, the, the sort of legacy on your career, right? And, and that's where really they're trying to go. So this is a big stepping stone for them for whoever wins this one, but it is simply the middle ground to their end goal. Yeah, keep, yeah. also keep in mind, both of these players are in the MPL. Making day two is huge. Oh, yeah. You get a very, very big boost in terms of the number of mythic points that you could earn. And that's crucial for not only, of course, qualifying for the World Championships, but also making it back into the MPL next year. That's right. We are just starting to see on the horizon, right? <laughs> right. Like it, it's, we've still got too much magic to play to really understand what the shape of that looks like. But a lot of it's going to be decided here. And then, of course, the next two Mythic Championships yes. until we wrap up this. Every season. point matters. Yeah, absolutely. And these players are hyper aware of that, especially as we start working our way down the stretch here. All right. Jensen takes a look at once again no ramp in hand, no goose, but otherwise there's some stuff. So this is one of those kind of questionable hands, right? That he doesn't have any acceleration here. He doesn't have any cheap interaction. He might mulligan this because he doesn't have that Paradise Druid. He doesn't have a Gilded Goose in his hand. And he does. Yeah. I think a lot of people just, if they picked up this deck for the first time, might just keep that hand, right? Yep. You got three lands, you got an Oko, it's the name of the deck. Yep. Uh, and, and you think it's fine, but Huey, very mindful you need to get off to a quick start here because one person typically just tends to snowball the game. Yes, yeah, so we see that over and over again. And this is an interesting one because this has a lot of pressure on the once upon a time. Huey really needs to find an untapped green source to get that Gilded Goose on the battlefield turn one. So he's going to take his draw for the turn. If it's not, we're going to see once upon a time get fired off and he is really going to be crossing his fingers to hit a, a, a forest or a breeding pool. Yeah, he is a favorite. There are, I believe, something like 15 untapped green sources in the deck. Mm -hmm. He's going to be getting six looks at here at an untapped green source. Okay, that so is very one. likely. Here we go. And there's there a is. forest. A little sigh of relief there from Jensen, though. He says, had it the whole time, never even doubted it. And there's Gilded Goose on the battlefield. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately for Yuza, he also wow. had Gilded Goose on air quotes turn one, but he had only a tap land until that forest just showed up. So now we can go Goose Goose. That was a huge draw. Drawing mm -hmm. that untapped forest means that he can run out of turn three Nissa. So wow. that was a tremendous draw for Martin Yuza, drawing that second untapped green source. Oh, but uh -huh. <laughs> I thought that was an island. That is not an island. And then he has a castle Vantress. Now, he's not dead for this, though. He's not. He just needs to find an untapped land here to be able to run out that. Nope. Okay. Yeah, so he's wow. going to have to settle here for his Planeswalker uh, into Fairy or Wicked Wolf. But Nyssa is going to have to wait a turn. And we're going to see a proper Nyssa fight here, Paul. Nyssa who shakes the world online for both players very soon. Uh, Jensen right now would need another mana source of the untapped variety. Yeah, Martin has to be very aware that that Huey can just choose to untap here and slam Nissa. So, you know, there's a couple things he can do here. He can run out to Ferry, bounce the food token so mm -hmm. that the goose won't be able to generate mana next turn, or run out the Wicked Wolf. Now, the problem with running out the Wicked Wolf is he, he spends both of the food that he has in play. Uh -huh. So those Gilded Geese, I guess, yeah. will, will no longer be able to generate mana, or at least it will take a few turns to be able to do so. Tough decision here for Yuza. It's really tempting to just use Wicked Wolf to kill your opponent's mana creature. But boy, does it set him back a lot. Because if you look at his hand, there's no more food coming. And he's not going to do it. He's just going to pass. And that was an untapped mana off the top of the library there for Jensen, which means he can play Nyssa. Right. But now we're on the other side of things, right? Because Martin can have counter magic in sideboard. Jensen might be very aware of this. He's got to be aware of this. He's got to be thinking, OK, what am I going to do here? Am I going to just slam this Nissa here? Because if he does, he's in excellent, excellent shape. Right? You know how many Martin, how many disdainful strokes Martin has in his board? All of them. All right. Yeah, so Jensen has to be aware of this. 
Does What's he, he do? sniff it out? He does. He just, he he just runs goes it out. And Martin's it. like, why Look did at you Jensen. Not play Look at his face. And he's like, had it. Wow. That was a sweet play from Huey. You never know, right? I mean, it right. looks like he has it if you just sit there. And Martin's like, come on. You couldn't have respected it just the once, <laughs> Jensen. Please. <laughs> and that was a huge swing in Jensen's favor. He took on some risk there. But boy, did it pay off because being the first one to get Nissa on the battlefield is huge. Definitely. Wow, great stuff from Jensen. Because when your opponent has three cards in their hand and access to uh, to four mana, you know, you think they got to have something here. That untapped land was actually pretty good here for Martin Yuza because now he can actually play Nissa who shakes the world and have the mana to play out that Wicked Wolf, which is oh, huge. Oh, wow, that's insane. And he has that additional food, so that Wicked Wolf is potentially a 4-4. Four -four. So what he can do is run out Nissa and then also play out the Wicked Wolf, eat the forest, and still have a 4-4 four -four in play. So we'll see if Martin uses patience, pays off here. He took the patient line last turn, didn't play anything, which he was not happy about. I think he was hoping, well, maybe Jensen will, will respect the, the uh, disdainful stroke. Huey didn't, but now Martin gets to kind of do it all. Yeah. Now he's going to animate the land, make a 3-3, attack the Nissa down to 3, unless Huey chump blocks here with the Gilded Goose, and then run out the Wicked Wolf. So very, very big turn here for Martin. That that untapped land, very, 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 very big. Huge. So here's that Wicked Wolf. And as you mentioned, Paul, the food at the ready. If he needs it, he can use it to pump up the wolf and eat this forest for lunch. Right. And, and even if Huey animates a land, that Nissa is still safe, right? Because if he animates a land and attacks with Paradise Druid, that's only five damage. That means that the Nissa can still live unless Huey has another attacker. Huey, can he do Oko? He does a, have another attacker. Yeah, make a right? food into a 3-3 three, three and do a land. Yeah, of course he can. He might make a goose into a 3-3. Three, three. He might value that food. Oh, sure. Because he has two in play. Because the extra goose is redundant. Let's see. What oh, he of course. Or you can just turn your land into a 6-6. Six, six sure. Because that interaction is a thing. Right, okay. And, <laughs> and then that gives him a better blocker for Wicked Wolf. Right. Okay. Because sometimes you, they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket in case right. it gets interacted with. But this makes great sense. Wow. This yeah. has been very, very back and forth, Paul. It feels like every time a player passes a turn, they're like, I'm in pretty good shape. And by the time it's their turn again, they're just super far yeah. behind. This is, this, is, this is great. So now Martin has, of course, is going to be attacking with the 3-3 three, and the Wicked Wolf into the Planeswalkers. And then he can, actu he can actually have the mana here to cast a fairy. He can tap two mana, make a food from one of the Gilded Goose. Then he can tap the forest, another land, and the goose to play Teferi to bounce that 6-6 six, six island. This is kind of interesting. Uh, Nissa is being attacked, though not quite for lethal if the Wicked Wolf gets blocked, which is what's going to happen. So Jensen gets to keep Nissa, who shakes the world, on the battlefield, and he even has a backup. Also, just a weird sight that uh, you don't... We didn't really see that much until Nissa was printed, but look at Jensen's land. <laughs> He's just got an island <laughs> He's been yeah. able to do a heck of a lot off of not that many uh, lands. Yeah, and this, this Teferi is going to allow Martin Yuza to draw an additional card and get a 6-6 off the battlefield. That's really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. The issue with, with Jensen here is he doesn't actually have forest, so he can't fully maximize on the mana advantage that you, that you can generate with Nissa who shakes the world. That's right, he has a zero, zero force around. <laughs> so he has access to two islands, a Paradise Druid and a Gilded Goose, along with the untap on Nissa. So he does have access to, four, uh, to five mana. And now Jensen goes into the patented Jensen thinking stance here. You'll also see John Finkel do this sometimes, put their hands on their temples while they tank it out. I tried doing it to see if I could, you know, play like them. Does it? Do you feel smarter when that happens? A, or little, a, little, a little bit. And then I make the play I was going to make, and it and didn't then, work right. out. Yeah. Reality hits. And right. It's yeah. brutal. It hits hard, too. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> yeah, this is tough. I mean, we've seen this combination, Wicked Wolf into Gilded Goose, just make things so difficult because even if Jensen chooses to make that Wicked Wolf into a 3-3, it'll still be a 4-4. There, there is that counter that's on it. 
By the way, chat going nuts with the not like this emote, <laughs> which I don't think that many people know that the, the person in that picture is actually a Magic player as well. That's Ben Swartz. I've done I've done events with him. He's Wait. been in the booth with me. He's the not like this guy. That's somehow wow. his. Claim this to is, this is a huge turn here. William making the most of absolutely maximizing the mana and the planeswalker advantage that he has. Martin does need to draw something here. He needs to find an action spell to try to deal with that Nissa in play. Again, every turn that's gone back and forth has favored the player whose turn it was in a pretty strong manner. But this time. How does Martin get out of this? Yeah. It, 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 you know, he just doesn't have the big haymaker to strike back this one time, finally. Yeah, I don't really think that he wants to be trading off his land here. I guess that might slow down Huey because Martin has more mana sources. Martin can just run out Paradise Druid and he will have the mana to make two food. It's just not impressive, right? right? I, the, the Gilded Geese are doing nothing. They're just flapping in the wind. Huey is running out of lands to animate. Maybe he that's... Is. He is. It's true. And he's kind of committed to keep protecting Nissa at this point because the thought of casting his other Nissa has kind of gone out the door at this point. Yeah, and I imagine now Martin's going to tap the forest and another land to generate a food. Or maybe he really, really wants to find action and can, and can activate the, the Scry 2 effect of Castle Vantress. Okay, sure. That might be more important, right? Looks like he's valuing the food here instead. He can get two food by doing this, the other goose as well. And play out of Paradise Druid. Yeah, so it is more mana efficient, but boy, he is really looking at the top of his library like one time. I don't even know what he can get at this point. I'm sure there are sequences of cards that he could win with. But. Of course. Yeah, a Hydroid Crisis might slowly try to get him back into this, right? Mm -hmm. Here's Once Upon a Time now from Jensen. He's going to grab a forest with it, it looks like. Somebody's got a nervous mouse finger down there. <laughs> <laughs> so Veil of Summer available now thanks to the uh, the green source that he has there. Though as it turns out, it would have to be a top deck for Martin to really matter at this point. All right, make another food token. Down to eight goes Yuza. And this one could be coming to an end shortly. Remember, we're in game three, and this is four... Day two, the winner of this match will advance to day two cleanly with five wins. And Martin needs to draw a high impact spell here. Agent of Treachery would be great. There you go. But Veil of Summer <laughs> is actually Martin uses hand, so that oh, wouldn't yeah. even do it. So In Huey's hand, so, yeah. So, so maybe a Hydrate Crisis is the card? Oh, no. That is not oh, what no. he wanted. Purely reactive spell here from Yuza. And his face kind of says it all. It's just, ah, this one just slipped away. Jensen able to leverage Oko and then eventually Nissa to huge advantage, repeatedly huge advantage over the course of this game. And Nissa just being, looking at games one and three and seeing what both players chose to do mm -hmm. on the turn that they had the ability to play Nissa was kind of what determined who won this match, right? Yep. In game one, Martin Yusa playing around Disdainful Stroke, right, because Huey had access to the two mana. In this game, Huey aware that Martin could have it, but deciding that the best chance for him to win is just hoping that Martin didn't have it to, to kind of take, take over this game is what's going to win in this game. Yeah, and it's, it was awesome play from both players, right? right. I mean, it, you know, like Martin very deftly played around Disdainful Stroke in the first game. And Huey very adeptly played into it. Right? And, you know, they both, it actually ended up working out well for both of them. But now the army has grown well and truly out of hand here. So this is getting disdainful trick. However, Huey can counter that with Veil of Summer, mm -hmm. as it does make all your spells uncounterable. And the one, of, like, oh, the one of, the one of. Of course, he has it, and he even <laughs> has to smile a little at that one. Jensen as well. 
And because uh, Jensen's trying to set up lethal here, right? He's going right. for the second Nissa. That can untap the other forest. Three creatures back. And let's not forget that that food can get rowdy as well. So that's five attackers and three Martin, Martin has three blockers along with the ability to gain six life. Yeah, so he won't be able to finish right. him off this turn, but... Uh, but he's not coming back from this. Right, exactly. And Martin knows it, Huey knows it, and William Huey Jensen advances to day two with five match wins here. Now, for Martin Yusuf fans out there, though, don't fret. He also has one more round to go where he can win it and get in clean. Yeah, he's still alive. Five wins is the magic number. If he still wins his next match, still into day two. That's right. But for in the meantime, congratulations to Huey. A great showing from him. Only one loss on the day. And he's in clean with the Simic food deck to day number two. So fantastic stuff from him. And I got to say, Reflecting on what you just mentioned a few minutes ago, Paul, what a pleasure to watch these two play. They played around, they played into. This is the highest level stuff that we get to see. Yeah, and absolutely. This is th this is the stuff that you really appreciate, right? Where both players are just on another level. Yep. And they just know exactly all the types of things that each other can have and playing around it perfectly. That's right. William Huey Jensen.